Today, we're going to look at a very unique decoration for game rooms and streaming setups that not only reduce e-waste and promotes retro game preservation, but also looks absolutely amazing. This video isn't sponsored. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about this product. It was sent for an honest review, and you can use Grid10 at checkout for 10% off. Let's check it out. So this was packaged very good for its journey to me, which is very important because this is extremely fragile as it does have a lot of glass and small components. And the presentation is simply phenomenal. So I think this would make a pretty good gift. Now I do wish the outer box was a little bit more handsome, maybe had a little graphic, something similar to this on it, but hey, this looks very nice. You do have a couple of foam blocks in here to keep this thing taut so it's not sliding around. You do have a card in here with a QR code that you can scan for a chance to win a limited edition frame with the internals of an iPhone. So you have a thank you card prompting you to leave a review on any other social or emailing them if you have any issues and a code for 15% off your next order. All right, the PS de resistance, so to speak. You have somebody's stamp or sigil there. Game of Thrones fans would be very stimulated to see that with a little imitation leaf here. Don't try smoking this or anything. It's, it's plastic. Fumes will get you. Oh, hello. Oh, this is sick. You do have a protective film here to keep fingerprints, dust and debris clear of your glass display. Oh, that's awesome. It even has Tetris, which is one of the original Game Boy games right there on the screen. I'm gonna get the rest of this plastic residue out of the frame, hit it with a little glass cleaner, and then give you guys some close-up detailed B-roll. If you do have any excess plastic pieces, like I have this small portion right here that ripped off, the easiest technique to remove it is with a pair of tweezers and then a small plastic scraper like this. You don't wanna use a knife or a flathead screwdriver or anything that could scrape the glass of your new display. I have a $7 toolkit here with some small tools that I used to use frequently when I was building custom controllers. And that is where these two parts are from that will be linked in the description below. So what you're going to do is push down on the glass on one side. And as you can see, it exposes the plastic more. Take your tweezers and remove the specimen. <laughs> there we go. It was a big one. And I think that is it. Let's go ahead and get this glass cleaned up. Best glass cleaner in the entire world. I'm not sponsored by this company or anything like that, but I use this for automotive use when I ran a small detailing business. And this is also safe for televisions, monitors, etc. as it is bleach and ammonia free. However, I still wouldn't recommend spraying it directly on a TV or monitor. Spray it on your rag and then wipe it off. Then I have a waffle microfiber over here whose whole purpose in life is to clean glass with wanton disregard. Might just leave it like that. Kind of gives a festive Christmas look with some fake snow. Oh yeah, this is gonna look so cool. Now, if you're not a perfectionist with a savage amount of OCD like myself, then you probably won't even take the time to remove little tiny follicles of plastic like that, but I want this bad boy to look insane which it does. Now this piece of gaming history is very near and dear to my rear because this was my first handheld console. Released in April of 1989, the DMG or Dot Matrix Game Boy it used different shades of grays and green. It was incredibly thick and bulky, but for the time, the performance of being able to play Nintendo titles like Super Mario Brothers and Zelda on the go was unheard of. Now this is a parts explosion diagram with all of the internal components. You have the main board over here, which is labeled DMG CPU. And this actually has the real chipset. You might get some nasty reflections from that ring light and I do apologize, but the level of detail and the intricacy in this is insane. But even looking at the speaker over here, if you take a good gander at that speaker, there's a little bit of rust in there and the metal is slightly tarnished. There is no denying this thing looks absolutely awesome and it is right up my alley as somebody that likes unique decorations for their game room. But I think this thing is absolutely awesome. Sharing my screen over here, I am on their website and I just wanna showcase a couple more of their products that really stand out to me. So they do a lot of cell phone breakouts or displays as well, which doesn't really tickle my fancy because I'm not a huge cell phone buff, but you know, I'm about that retro gaming life. So coming over here to game consoles, you have the Game Boy Advance, the Nintendo DS Lite, the Game Boy Color, PSP 1000, so the original PSP model, a Sega Game Gear, which I do own one in running condition that I will be doing a full renovation or refurbishment on and also adding a couple of modern niceties like an LCD screen, better speaker and ceramic capacitors. And then over here, a DualShock 4 controller, which I don't really know what this is doing here. I thought maybe they'd go with like a NES controller or maybe a PlayStation 1 controller. The DualShock 4 really isn't a collector's item, so I'm not really sure what that's doing there. This is one that I would love to get my hands on, Grid, if you're watching, which I know you are because you sent this for review. And it shows that funky backlight, which the Game Gear had, which is an actual fluorescent style tube light, incredibly prone to failure. But just that intricate detail on this thing is insane. Let's take a look at this PSP 1000 real quick. So freaking cool. 
And one of the things I really like about these grid displays is the fact that they are using electronic components that have simply stopped working. Now, this is good for two reasons. They're repurposing dead components, which minimizes e-waste or electronics waste and saves these components from getting jammed in a landfill somewhere. And this is also good for retro game preservation. Granted, units like the Game Boy and PSP were mass produced in the hundreds of thousands or even millions. And there are still plenty of them in circulation in various conditions that you can find on things like eBay if you're trying to pick one up. However, the fact that they're not taking working units taking them apart and then just putting them on display is very good as a lot of diehard retro gamers would have an issue with that. I'm a big fan of what they're doing over there at Grid Studio, creating unique decorations for game rooms while supporting retro game preservation and doing their part for the massive problem of e-waste. The only downside or con in my opinion is the fact that these are incredibly expensive displays. However, they do run sales and promotions on their website rather frequently, and I do think these would make an awesome gift because of their presentation. Or for yourself, sometimes you gotta treat yourself. If you wanna check out these unique displays from Grid Studio, there is a link down there in the description below. If you enjoyed this game room decoration review liking the video will help it to get seen by more gamers this information will reach into system as well and in turn helps me grow this channel which i do greatly appreciate subscribe for more content like this i cover news in the gaming community and industry as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and youtubing and honest gaming peripheral reviews keyboards mice headsets controllers mics chairs etc and i'll see you tomorrow peace